how you process information. Well, obviously, the bottom line is that you have a certain amount of sensory input. Okay. That sensory in input is interpreted with regards to its significance as a consequence of its interaction with what you already know, which is basically to say that your present, which, is, which constitutes the sensory information theoretically that's impinging on you at, at this moment, is not a veridical picture of the external world, but your interpretation of reality as it's unfolding. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to make a point that there's no such thing as an external reality or that you're living in a delusion or any of those things, just that you're always interpreting what's going on in relationship to its significance to you. And you have models, you're, it's models that are doing that. You have theories about what someone's like, what you're like, and what the situation consists of, and what you should be doing next. And all of the input that you have that constitutes your online experience is a function of your interpretation. It's based on actual information, but it's still a function of interpretations. Okay, so we use your declarative memory, that's one form of memory storage, to construct your version of the present. That's the significance of things as they're unfolding at the present time. You can only really you can only really make judgments about the significance of things by contrasting them with what you would like to happen. So that's your image of the, of the desired future. Okay. If, you're, if you're doing something that's even, that's very simple. Well, let me give you an example. There are experiments where people's task is to pick up an object. And they can see the object in front of them. Okay, so you're given the task, that's the basic story, the story is, what you're required to do is to transform yourself from the person you are now into the person who has uh, possession of that watch. It's just a standard laboratory experiment. But the watch is actually not there. It's an image that's generated by mirrors. And when you move towards the watch, you find that it's not where it appears to be. Well. The fact of the object not being where it appears to be is an anomaly with regards to your current plan. And you'll react to that emotionally. The first thing that will happen is that, well, obviously you're going to be surprised, right? You think, this is pretty easy. I'm going to pick that up and you find out that the thing that you see is not actually there. That's an anomaly. So, well, you contrasted your desired future, which was your aim when you moved your arm, with the actual outcome of your actions. Okay, that's a mismatch. It's a part of your brain called the hippocampus that seems to be responsible for comparing what's actually going on, insofar as you can interpret that, with what you want to happen. And if, if a mismatch occurs, that sets up a whole sequence of related events. And those re events manifest themselves in emotion and in thought and in behavior, most evidently in emotion. If you're going to do something, you've done it before, and it doesn't work out the way you expected it to, the events that constitute the anomaly, the unexpected occurrence, they're surprising. And the question then is, what does surprising mean? Well, it basically means that something threatening has occurred, and something, well, something unknown has taken place. So what does the unknown mean? Well, the thing about the unknown is that you don't know what it means. Pretty, that's a pretty straightforward statement. But, you see, that immediately, that immediately introduces a strange sort of paradox, because you lack infinite information. Obviously, people don't know what they're doing all the time, which means that you come into contact with things that you don't understand a lot. And that means, in a sense, that you have to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Because you don't know what to do a lot. And that doesn't, doesn't just bring you to a halt. What well, is the case that your nervous system is hardwired to move to a sort of default position when the plans, that the explicit plans that you have that you're carrying out fail. So as long as you could say in a sense, as long as you know what you're doing, which means that you have a representation of where you are and where you'd like to be. You're carrying out your plans to make the move and things are going according to plan. Well, as long as you're doing that, then the higher centers in your, of your brain, the cortex basically, it's under control. You know what you're doing. You feel comfortable and secure. As soon as something unexpected happens, the control shifts, and this is something that's basically beyond your capacity to control, though you can interfere with the process. Control shifts from the cortical centers 
to the more fundamental areas of the brain, to the limbic system. When something unexpected happens, two things occur. You stop, you feel a little bit of anxiety. It depends on how unexpected the occurrence is. If it's really unexpected, you'll be very, very frightened. If it's just minor, something minor, leak, unexpected, you'll just stop. Your sensory processing will heighten, you'll gather more information, and you'll explore. And as you explore, you generate information, and the information is supposed to bring you back on course, basically. So you'll say, um, well, what you'll do if you're trying to reach for the watch and you find out that it isn't where you think it is, well, you'll start making different sorts of approach sequences until you end up producing the outcome that you intended. And when something unexpected occurs, two sets of circuitry are activated. One looks like it's dominated by the right hemisphere, and the other looks like it's dominated by the left hemisphere. Unexpected things make you anxious and curious, and you can localize those emotions in the body, so to speak. Anxiety is the emotion that accompanies the cessation of your body's plan-directed activities. Okay, that's, you could say that anxiety is what you feel when you slip into the mode of pause, pause for further analysis. What you expected to do didn't happen, so you have to stop. Curiosity is what you feel when it's necessary for you to explore further, to gather new information, to update your plans. And exploration is basically governed by the interplay of the circuitry, brain circuitry, that mediates anxiety and curiosity. Curiosity, by the way, that's associated with positive emotions. And anxiety, as you all well know, is associated with that's a negative emotion. People would rather not experience it. Curiosity, or surprise, is basically a juxtaposition of those two sets of emotions, which work antagonistically. The unknown produces conflict all by itself. That's the, in, in a sense, and it, it's kind of early to introduce this, but that's the, the central um, theme, in a way, of the whole course, is that you have a hardwired response to the emergence of the unexpected. You have to, because you have to know what to do when something unexpected occurs. It's instinctive. Your instinctive response to the unknown is anxiety plus curiosity, which is to say cessation of ongoing motor activity plus a drive to move forward and explore. And your exploratory activity is actually the sum total of the activation of the two sets of circuitry that mediate that response. And when you explore, if you explore, if something unexpected happens, you don't have to explore. You can note it and get the hell out of there. It's safe, but you don't gather any new information. It's a good short-term strategy, it's not a good long-term strategy, but anyways, the point is, is that surprise activates curiosity. And it tells you forward, you generate new information, you update your plan, and soon you can get to where you want it to go. And the point is that mismatch between what you expect to happen and what actually happens, that disinhibits anxiety. If you want another amazing clip of a young Jordan Peterson, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. There's a number of museums like this throughout the world, and their central motto is never forget. And this has always been confusing to me, this notion of never forgetting. 